What's going on, traders? Sean Kozak here, tuning in again with Neural Street Trading Academy. And it's that time. Let's create some winning traders. Now, in today's trade room recap, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about the strategies that we've been trading in the classroom. I want to talk about the indicators in the system that we're using, the trades that I took in the class, plus the conditions in the market so you get a better understanding of what we did today in the trade room. Now, first and foremost, if you're new to Neural Street, make sure you hit that subscribe button somewhere down here. That way it's going to help our channel grow. More importantly, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up. That lets us know that you're engaging and we're doing a good job teaching you our concepts. Plus, you want to make sure you're notified every time we put out content like this. So there's a notification bell. Give a little flick and you'll make sure that next time we put out content, you'll know that we're, we're here and helping you. So first and foremost, traders, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the conditions. Um, today we had a full roster. And what do I mean by that? Economically, some mornings are kind of hectic because the reports are back to back to back to back to back. And today was GDP, home sales, and then we had inventories. And in those types of days, I find that uh, futures trading can be quite difficult if you don't know what you're doing. And on days like today, you need to have a strategy and you also need to understand what your strategy is because we had to wait. Like I passed on lots of trades this morning because it didn't really meet my risk tolerance. It met the system criteria for triggers on the entry, but it wasn't something that I was really actively engaged and wanting to take trades on. And then as soon as things aligned, I executed. Now I took a trade on crude oil. I took a break even on that trade because I didn't like the way it was reacting close to my target and I didn't get the fill. So I ended up reducing risk and it was a risk-free trade. I'll, like I always said in my class, I'll always take a risk-free trade over a loss any day. Now, the other side is that I waited until after the inventory report was out and then I got the trade of the morning, which was the big rip on gold. And I I actually, you know, I'm going to talk about the second trade here on gold because gold's moving right now and it is in a directional market and we are getting setups. The problem is, is that I'm, I'm late to the party because <laughs> I'm filming this video and I didn't pay attention to my entry and uh, I'm late to the party. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about the trade that I did take on crude oil. Let's go take a look at crude oil. First and foremost, let's take a look at correlation. You can see the correlated strength off the percentage open from the Globex open was negative and then after the, the European and open here at three o'clock, it went into positive territory into the morning session after the pit open. So you can see here that this is the European open. We stayed short bias. We had a little, like a little bit of a selling pressure in the, off the markets. And then after the open of the pit, we really ripped up because of the, the news that happened today with GDP and with inventories, et cetera. Now, when we see that, we want to pay attention to the markets that are stronger. And re realistically, out of the euro and out of gold, these two markets were kind of battling for strength. We missed trades on the euro, but the gold market was better trading today. I had better trades on gold just because it was cleaner setups. And the index market, Markets. There was a lot of trades, but man, I, I have a hard time trading a trend after it's traded to the moon. Normally, I like to get on the, 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 the spaceship on Mars and at least jump on the ride. But today, we didn't get a chance to because after wave five, I don't like to trade trends. And we were in wave seven and wave nine and who knows which wave we were riding. It was like, felt like I was surfing the ocean, right? So... What, I, what I'll tell you here, that's just my preference, right? My preference is to, to trade the strategies knowing the right context because days like today are really fundamentally driven and you need to make sure you understand that, okay? Now, first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about the oil market. The oil market on the auction time frame is our main go-to time frame. I, I spent a lot of time on the auction time frame because it's really the institutional bank time frame. And really what we're doing here is we just want to make sure we understand the direction of the market, right? We just need to make sure that you know the market is up. The art market is in an uptrend. You can see we're making higher highs and higher lows. The average price is up between the 9 and the 20. There's no question about it, right? We've got liquidity pockets here at about 39.50 and about 39.65. And then we're putting in high liquidity here at 39.89. The, the thing is that we're not looking to short these pockets. Counter trend, you could have made some money, but here you would have had hard time counter trend. Here you would have had time turn, hard time counter trend. We're trend trading in the classroom. Therefore, we're not thinking like that. We're waiting for the market to break above these and pop and give us the impulse to the upside. Side. So what I ended up doing is uh, you'll see these two green lines here. Those are our cues for entry. And I'm going to go into the entry time frame and show you that. So I'm on a five minute chart. Okay. The reason I'm on the five minute chart is because this is the break of the five chart. And uh, let's go down. Actually, there should have been three entries. That's right. Because I took the first one. So let's go back here and take a look at this. 
So what we do in our classroom, and I'll, I'll just break the strategy down a little bit, is when you're in a when you're in a trend, okay, you have two ways to engage in the trend with a breakout continuation or a pullback continuation. There's no real other way to engage in directional trading. You're either trading the breakouts or you're trading the trend trade breakouts because you're still trading a breakout either way, but one is on the highs and one is on the pullback. And so the only difference is understanding the ro rotation of price and understanding the structure. So the first trade here, and I'm just going to show you this, I, I said to the traders, I said, if we have this impulse here and we get this pullback, the high price is here. If we break this, we're breaking into the highs. And in order for me to do that, I need to see some buying volume in here. And I haven't seen any buying volume. It's just, it just really bearish. The selling volume was there. And then we broke out a little bit. And if you did take this break trade here on the five minute, okay, the entry would have been one tick above this high. And then you would have had to move your stop to break even as soon as we breach the highs. Because in a situation on a breakout, if the breakout doesn't continue, you cannot leave yourself exposed to risk. Your stop would initially be here. Then you move it to here. Because if the breakout doesn't continue like that, you get what we call fake out breakouts. So in situations like this, you should never be exposed to the stop loss knowing how to manage the risk properly. Now, what we waited for is I waited for the ABC pullback, which was here. And what I then I'll just explain this. This is still a pullback. This is the impulse ABC break of the highs right here. Look at the sell volume declining. That's the key. That is the key on the pullback when the sell volume declines, right? Just like that, you start to see buy volume. Wait for it. Boom. On the breakout, what are you seeing on the volume? You're seeing the volume happen on an increase of buy volume. Now, I took a little bit of slippage on that because I was waiting for it to clear all the highs, but I could have got in one tick better at 34.46. Anyways, the point of the matter is my target was up here. I'll show you just so you understand what we're doing here. Okay. Just so you understand, the stop loss goes below the low, and the target... My target was a one-to-one. -one. So it has to be one tick below the lows, 15. So my target needs to be, was here. And I said, if we break the highs, I'm going to take the target. If we get close to the highs, okay, if we get close to the highs, I'm moving my stop to break even. We got close to the highs. I move my stop to break even. And the reason for this 10 o'clock, 10, 10 inventories is in 20 minutes. If we're not breaking out, this market's not breaking out until after the fundamentals. So I said, you know what, guys? Go to a risk-free trade. If you get paid, you get paid. If you don't, nothing ventured, nothing gained. What ended up happening is they ended up pulling back. They did give a little bit more follow-through. They pulled back again, waiting for the inventory. Here was the deeper pullback. You can see that every time we were breaking out. This was the queue, and this is what I said to the traders. This was the queue right here. You can see this was the high break right here. These highs on this pullback, because this is all one big consolidation of this pullback here. Every time we're breaking the highs, we're breaking the highs on high volume. And so watch what happens. As soon as these two highs were put in, this was the giveaway. This was the giveaway. Look at that volume spike, and we were still in that candle. That is where I missed the trade. You see, I had a little circle here because I explained to the traders in the class and I said, listen, we missed it. The reason we missed it was because we were actually trading other markets at the time and we were we were looking at other trades. So you can't, can't get them all, but the, the, this was a really, really sexy trade on crude oil today. And this is our strategy as we were waiting for the break. Boom. There it goes lightning all the way up to the daily levels. Now, these black lines are daily levels that we map out in the pre-market. And so that would have been a really, really great target. You would have had an opportunity to re-engage with a trend trade for another continuation. Um, I'm going to show you exactly where the next trade was after the impulse right here. The next trade was here, guys. I'm not a big fan of this, and I'll explain why. Because I don't like trading these when I don't have a lot of room for profit. This is really, really aggressive. Trading into these areas, you're trading into daily levels. And I have a hard time trading into daily levels 
because now you're going into big time frame resistance. And so that's why I, I just mapped out the areas there. I didn't execute on that, even though it would have been a profitable trade. I'm just not a big fan of it. The, the, the better trade was here, right as we pulled back. And I'll explain why, because we already cleared through those daily levels. And when we pulled back, we'd already cleared through that resistance. And so this was the next break trade right here. We broke the highs down at the bottom. <laughs> okay, this one would have given you a fake out. You would have got it. You would have got low ticked here, but you would have had to re-enter here. Okay, just because of the way that the market traded, and that's just an unfortunate truth. Which is why I don't take the breakouts into daily levels. Right, this one here, this one here was, you know, still very aggressive. I have a hard time with it. I personally have a hard time trading into these higher time frame levels like this because the market tends to go sideways like this. I personally would rather trade levels down here with room to get to my areas or re-engage with the breaks with room to get to my areas because then I've got room to move, right? And that's just smarter trading. It's more selective trading. It's not that it's better or worse. It's just my style. It's my style of trading. I prefer to wait for better trades. That's just me. And as an instructor, it's my job to teach you how to be the best trader possible. So <laughs> what I want to do is I want to talk about what I was interested in trading and <laughs> came back for the pullback entry. We're going to wait and see if it breaks above here. Um, let's talk about gold. GDP, gold market's a messy market, guys. GDP day is a messy day normally, I find. But let's talk about gold. Okay, on this time frame, okay, higher high in price. We held the lows as soon as we broke the high on the 30 minute was when I knew this market was going higher. I entered on the five minute, okay? I rode the first part of this impulse up for a nice day trade and the left of it, well, I was only in with small contract size, so I didn't really go any further. <laughs> where I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing another opportunity for this trend right now. That's why I have this green line here. We just made a higher high on price. Okay. It's just we're, we don't have any follow through. At this time of day, a lot of times gold traders aren't really happening. Okay. So let's go into the smaller time frame and explain what I did. I'll show you the break entry here. So you understand the, the, the trade entry. You see down here, this was the break of the higher time frame right here, these green lines. And then what I said to the traders, I said, if we break above them, we're going higher. I entered on that. I entered right here on this trade. And my stop loss was down here below the lows. Okay. And uh, actually, no, my stop loss was below the five minute break candles right here. I had a much smaller stop loss on that. And that's why I, I, I entered here for just over a one to one. <laughs> so I had a much smaller stop on that trade. So I ended up taking the this leg from here to here. It's not a huge trade, guys. It's a nice day trade, right? It was a nice pop and lock. It was a nice breakup trade. It was a one-to-one R multiple, quick scalp. And then what ended up happening was the market just ripped all the way up, which was why I when I said the 30-minute broke on the higher time frame was when we knew the five-minute was going to kick in. And that's happening right now, actually. That's happening right now, right here. So let me explain what's happening. I just missed this trade actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about this. So let's go in here. This is an ABC pullback on the five minute chart. This is zero to wave one to two to wave three. This is an ABC pullback. We're getting higher volume on those bars at the bottom and we're breaking up on the highs. So what I ended up doing here is I put a little green line here. I like to put a green line. It helps me, helps me see my entry price. My entry price is one tick above here. So right here, my entry price, I should be long this market right now, to be honest with you. And uh, that's uh, 25 ticks. So we'll move it up here to 25 ticks. One to one right here at 250 per contract. Should have been in this, you should have hit the one to one target right away out of that. Now here's the opportunity that I'm seeing <laughs> is that we're also getting an opportunity for a break trade on the five minute again. So this is now a break. This was the apex break. But if we can break up through here, there's another opportunity for us to break the highs here. Okay, there's another opportunity for us to break the highs with a much tighter stop. If this can break up here on higher volume, if we can see this clear the highs in here on higher volume, this is going to be an indication. I'll explain why. Because we broke the highs on the 30. This was the key on the 30-minute chart. We cleared the highs on the 30. 
So this is the exact same trade that I took today in the classroom that I'm waiting for that kick in on the five minute. If we can break up here, but I'm not seeing enough volume. The first trade was down here at the bottom. I'm not seeing enough volume come up here. And this is live, guys. This is live trading. So for me, I'd really like to see if this breaks up. If it doesn't break up, this would have been the first one to one right here that you would have been able to capture on the break of the apex. But a lot of times, wave four doesn't continue. You don't know if they're going to break or not. Why? Time of day is not too shabby here. It's not too great. But we're riding above this volume here on this 30 minute and we broke a high on the pullback, which tells me buyers are stepping into this market. It just means we need to wait for them to actually really do it. And the way we do that is on the five minute. So if they break above the highs here by one tick, right there, if they can break at 0260 and I see a spike on buy volume down here, that is my cue to get in this market. And that is my cue to write it to the daily, right up to there. That would be my cue to write it up here for a nice, nice trend trade. <laughs> that would be a break of the highs on the five minute. That'll be the break of the pullback and that'll be the entry. And that's what we're doing in our classroom. That's what we're doing is we're, we're trading price, volume, momentum, and we're using auctions. We're using 30 minute auction levels to show us what the big profile volume are doing here. <laughs> the big thing here is making sure that you always have your daily levels mapped out. You always know where your auction volume is. If this doesn't continue, this is why we watch the volume because we don't enter until we see a break of price. Price leads, volume leads. Everything else is secondary. Everything else is secondary. Price and volume leads, which is why if we were, if I was paying attention, I would be in this trade down here. Price broke here on volume. Price needs to break here for me to get the re-entry on volume. I ain't seeing the volume. Question is, where is it? This is live. This is live. Okay. So, patience. <laughs> if this breaks the highs in here and I do not see any volume coming in here, look, there's no volume. Nobody's trading. So, I'm not interested. And that's just me, guys. I'm going to keep the gains in the in the account keep the gains until we get something really sexy that makes sense. That's us trading, guys. If you want to come in and learn and you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, if I get the opportunity here, I'll execute live in the video. But if I don't, I'll wait for the market. And uh, I can show you how to trade. We can show you how to pick the best trades. I can show you how to pass on the bad trades. And you can be in a part of a community with hundreds of traders who are all doing the same thing. And uh, we've been doing quite well. So if you want to come in and actually trade with us and learn what we're doing, it can be traded on futures, forex, and stocks. And uh, all you need to do is learn the patterns, the setups, and the rules. See, there's a break of the highs, but I'm not seeing it on any bigger volume. Not seeing it on any bigger volume. So the better trade was on, uh, see, there's the breakout, but it's on thin volume, and I'm not interested on that. So realistically, the best trade was the one at the bottom, which would have been the, the right trade anyways. The best trade was the break of the apex at the bottom. Because we've seen the volume spike a bar early. And that's the key. When you see the volume spike a bar early and it comes in and it breaks here, look, you see the volume spike here. You can see it on the break. Here we don't see that. You don't see, Now you see it. Now we're starting to see a little bit of volume spike in here. But it's it, to me, it's a little lagging. And, and normally you don't have volume lagging like that. So I, I, I think it's aggressive. That would be an aggressive entry right there. And I don't trade too aggressively. I like to really keep the, the A trades. I like A trades. I like I like really clean setups. But realistically, you'd be in this trade from the beginning if you were in our classroom this morning. That's where we'd be taking those trades, right there. So that's the break stop below the high, T1, T2 up here. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up. Ask questions. I don't expect you to learn it all in one recap video. But like I said, if you want to come and learn what we're doing, I can show it to you. You just got to join the class. Take care. Give me a thumbs up. We'll see you in the class tomorrow. Bye for now.